So you might have already heard about this Samsung situation. The company is getting sued for misleading customers and this whole case goes deeper than the surface level. So when you go into a store and buy a flagship phone nowadays, you'll probably be told at some point that the phone is water resistant. What that means is it has undergone vigorous testing to make sure that it can tolerate fresh water with no issues. They might dunk the device and spray it with high pressure jets. And then depending on how much of this torture the device can withstand, it is awarded an IP rating. It could have very slight resistance to water and get something like an IP6-2 rating, or it could be a much more well-rounded device and get an IP6-8. Regardless, it is easy to forget that no matter how well a phone does in this testing, it is only ever being tested in fresh water. The obvious thing would be to extrapolate this, to assume that swimming pools are fine, that the sea is fine, but this is where it starts to break down. A swimming pool, or at least most swimming pools, contain massive amounts of chlorine, which is there to break down bacteria, but can also very quickly start corroding the rubber seals on your device, the very ones that are there to keep the water out. And the salt in seawater is even worse. So the Australian competition authorities, which are there to make companies behave themselves and kind of to protect the consumers that end up buying these phones, are the ones that have built the case. They've basically dug up a whole number of cases where Samsung has advertised their phones being used near swimming pools, near the sea, as if this was the usage case scenario that they endorsed. In fact, one advert literally just shows a guy fully immersed in a pool using his Galaxy phone as if he was just chilling on a bench. I would say this, I've actually personally been on quite a few of these sets where smartphone campaigns are being filmed and a lot of the time, the creative teams that are in charge of the creative campaigns have nothing to do with the people that actually built the phone. And so I could see a situation where the engineering team has correctly stated that these phones are water resistant, but then the marketing team and the agencies they employ to build these commercials have misunderstood this to mean waterproof. Internal miscommunication would be my initial suspicion. Unfortunately, there's a couple of problems with this idea that actually make the situation for Samsung even worse. You see, when the Australian authorities were putting this case together, they found over 300 situations where Samsung had advertised these kinds of scenarios. And they are present across all sorts of formats. You've got full-scale video adverts, you've got product web pages, and even paid influencer campaigns that are all pretty clearly showing these phones in and around the sea. And I guess the real problem comes with what they did about it. Part of what Samsung is being accused of is not just selling this phone in the wrong kind of light, but refusing responsibility for phones damaged because of it. And on one hand, you can kind of forgive them for that. It's pretty standard for smartphone warranty to not cover damage by liquids. But if Samsung is going to show people that actually our phones are safe to use around all bodies of water, then I think they need to be ready for when customers actually try it. To then deny these customers help, because apparently Apparently this liquid damage is not covered by our warranty policy is almost denying that there's any problem at all with the marketing. Now I'm not going to stand here and defend what's happened, it's not a great situation. But at the same time this Samsung case is only a really small part of a bigger problem in the smartphone market. The last five years especially have been this kind of whirlwind of extreme marketing, of stretching the truth and doing everything you can to downplay your competitors. So let me explain the real problem. There are more smartphones now than there ever have been. The long-standing companies are producing more models than they used to. For example, Apple has gone from one a year to three. And there are also now so many new players that it's hard for anyone who's not a massive smartphone fan to keep track. And so in a situation like this, where the messages that you're trying to put out as a company are getting drowned by the sheer volume of competition, the answer is to shout, to make claims, to really exaggerate just how good your phone is. You might know that Sony, when they released their Z3 smartphone, did so alongside an official unboxing video performed in what looks an awful lot like a swimming pool. Technically, the phone was probably okay, because in that scenario they would have controlled the water conditions very carefully. But is it misleading? Definitely. And it's not just a miscommunication when it comes to water resistance ratings, it is smartphone marketing in general. You might remember Huawei's Nova 3i, for which the trailer literally showed a guy using the phone to take a selfie, but instead of then seeing the actual selfie that phone took, Huawei shows us a shot taken on a DSLR camera. It's treading a line. They haven't explicitly lied, but they're definitely suggesting that if you took a selfie on that phone, it's gonna look something like this one. And 
I've used the phone, it is definitely not. You've got AT&T, which is a service provider in the US, who also got in trouble recently for what they call 5G evolution. It is not 5G, it's basically just a rebrand of the LTE networks already in place. But by adding this little 5GE logo into the corner of phones that were using AT&T's network, it looks like they were almost trying to trick them into feeling like AT&T were ahead of their competitors. Anyways, to round this whole thing off, does this mean that you should stop buying Samsung phones? Not really. Whilst they are getting into trouble for making it seem like their phones have more resistance than their competitors, it's not a case that they have any less resistance than their competitors. So just take the advertising with a pinch of salt and you should be fine. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a whole playlist on smartphone news like this, so I'll leave that link from this video. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.